Hello. What's up, True Feelings family? How you guys doing today? If you're new to my channel, my name is Crystal, and I hope you stay. And if you do, welcome to the family. Cameron and Aries. So he got the same damn stipulations as Michael. He can't do shit for at least 60 days. And maybe after 60 days, he could take his ass down there to Florida. Seemed like the probation officer agreed that because he get in so much trouble where he's in trouble right now, that it'd be best once they get married for his ass to take his ass somewhere else and hopefully not get in no damn trouble. I have to mother my fiance. But Eris and Cameron, let me say something, sir. Let me say something to you, Cameron. Cameron, it's, um, yeah, Cameron, it's time for you to stop looking like a thug. Don't nobody want to be walking around with you with your damn pants hanging off your damn ass. You in your 30s. It's time for you to put on some big boy clothes and change that damn image if you can. You about to be somebody's stepdaddy. Eris, I wouldn't take him to walk to school with my daughter. Don't nobody want their stepdaddy walking on the school ground with his pants hanging all off his damn ass. Look at yourself. Pull your pants up, sir. You need a grown ass man. So if you you messing with somewhat of a little, little boy here and you feel and you said it yourself, you're mothering this child. And you are, you're gonna have to mother him. Teach him how to dress, make him turn into a man and put on some damn regular clothes. You don't have to look thuggish all the time. Look thuggish when you're going in there doing your music. But when you walk your ass up out of there, Cameron, put on some clothes, cause don't nobody wanna see your damn ass. Hey. I don't know what it is with these young girls want these thug ass dude rappers like seriously and it's like I just I just I just don't get the attraction is it the sex it's like what what would just want you want to commit to him I'm sorry why he's funny but that ain't enough for shit now, Cameron said his probation officer said he could drink as long as he don't go too far and get no trouble. Cameron, it sounds like you real focused on drinking, and I think that may be a problem because it sounds like you like to drink, like you're just ready to. I hope that's not a problem for you, but it's definitely going to be a problem for your your, your wife. She ain't going to like that shit, okay? She already said she don't want to see you with no Patron. She don't want to see you wilding out. That's not her shit. She don't want that to be your shit. She wants you to get it together because, like you say, you like to do dumb shit, and it probably happens when you're under the influence of alcohol. I am allowed to drink, not to excess. So they get to the studio. He introduced her to all his little friends and shit. Not one of them dusty ass, crusty ass, bum ass dudes got up and offered her a seat, including you, Cameron. She just standing by the door and shit in this little old box. It looked like it was hot as fuck. Everybody should have had a damn mask on. Just hot. Just she just standing. None of these bum asses offer her a damn seat. Happiness is my priority right now. So he's reminiscing reminiscing I said that shit all wrong about what happened to him when he got caught and shit and you know it's a funny little thing now but he you know he said that's the first time he ever been in trouble and shit and when he got in trouble he got in trouble it's like dude don't do it no more he said he ain't gonna go back I hope you not I hope you're not sir so then he take his ass into the studio and do a little song how you love me but you hate me um hmm Aaron thought it was the best thing in the world. She think he is fucking uh, Snoop Dogg Dogg, okay? Really do. She thought it was just wonderful beyond her expectations. He blew my mind. I said, girl, if you don't quit it, I don't know what the hell you, you must have been out there drinking some of that damn Hennessy out there. So he come out the studio and there she is still standing she probably didn't want to sit in one of those funky asses she probably like me when i go into certain places people offer me a seat i'm like i'm good i will just stand maybe that's why she was standing it's like it's too many crusty legs in here for me to even want to take a seat but there she is just looking at them everybody drinking their little liquor and shit i don't know what it is is it one of them little cigarettes again that he had in his hand but she getting drunk now i don't know why you would think him being a rapper this is what he's gonna do 
Like, this is what, he, what he's going to do every time he goes to the damn studio. And I would think you would know this. Most rappers have this type of behavior. So I don't know if you will be able to go in there and change that shit. It's the behavior of the game, boo-boo. It's the behavior of the game, and he's going to keep doing it. And that's where you guys are going to have these little problems. Man, but she took that little bottle... And took that shit right outside the door. Walked the hell out. She's like, I told you I ain't doing this shit. I said, this is going to be a problem. So I hope you don't have a drinking problem. If you do, get that shit under control. Because it ain't nothing but trouble. I don't drink, all right? So now they're picking up the suit. And they're meeting the sister. We met the first sister. I can just tell you, I love the sisters. They're cute, natural in the face, fine. But his sisters are fine. I love their personality. <laughs> um, so he let them know after introducing them, like, yeah, we get married, like, the next day. Sis is like, oh, shit, dude, this is kind of soon. What? And then I... You know, you pregnant? Like, what's going on? She pregnant? Like, nah, it ain't nothing like that. And then the older sis walk in. Oh, my God. I just, like I said, I just love the sisters. And then he tell her, introduce her to, to uh, heirs, and then let them know, we get married. And I love the sister's response. Oh. That shit was funny. She's like, hold up. She's like, when? So they said they get married. At 12 midnight. That's what they told the homeboys who they get married at 12 midnight. Now I'm trying to figure out for the life of me, people. Are they going to turn into fucking Fiona and Shrek at 12 midnight? Who gets married at fucking 12 midnight unless you in Vegas? Is that common while they add up there to get married at 12 midnight? At 12 midnight? Is this ass going to turn into a real man and not a fucking thug? Like, what is it at 12 midnight? You going to have your baby fucking wake, awake at a damn wedding at 12 midnight? I want to know why the hell they get married at 12 midnight, okay? Why? Why not wait? So, so far, the sisters are chatting it up with Eris. And they're asking her some questions. She's letting them know I got a daughter and everything. And one of the sisters is like, oh shit, might, you might want to wait till you get married. Get married kind of soon. See how they like feel about each other and everything. But, you know, Eris says she got this shit. She gonna let the daughter get to know him after they get married. They, they get married. But I like the sisters. I like how they responded to her. I just like their personality. But they said it better not be no damn shit. Because they said they don't mind pulling up. If the pull up is a pull up. That was my, the best part. That was the best part for me. The pull up sisters. That's why that had to be my damn title. The pull up sisters. I like that shit. Like you better back, make sure everything alright. You don't want us to get on your bad side. Because when we pull up. We gonna pull the hell up. Hell up. He the little brother and shit. He the youngest one. So they hoping everything gonna go right. I think they more concerned about him acting a fool. Than her acting a fool. She gonna be committed. But he just a kind of a committed fool. I don't know what y'all down here. I don't know what. Anyway, moving on to who is it, Michael and Justine's asses. This magic stuff is cute. You don't make something. You know why Michael and Justine is boring as hell to me? And it's in a good way. Because they have a storyline that makes sense. It ain't a bunch of razzle dazzle and shit. They shit make sense. He's getting out. He's married. He's trying to navigate through his wife, through his stepkids, through his kids, trying to get along in life. She trying to navigate from being a friend to a, a daughter-in-law and a stepmother. Everybody's navigating through shit right now. So their storyline makes sense. It's just boring, okay? It really is. It's just boring at this point. Um, but I'm glad that she and the mother and the sister they all made up but the sisters like I ain't gonna be faking no funk with you we still trying to get shit together so I'm glad that part happened but I'm just like okay you guys are just you're boring I can really get at the same time so the mama's taking Michael's kids back to the mother now something that he said is that he and the kids mother they're not seeing eye to eye they have issues you might want to bring them in but I think 
Um, Justine's the only one want to do the cat suit shit. She ain't trying to get no more pussies up in the thing. That's what I'm kind of feeling. But they need to come on in because I'm pretty sure that your kid's mother have some things to discuss with you, Michael. Because you kind of went to jail kind of quick after having a baby by another side chick. So the mother of his three kids probably got a big issue. 13 years together, no marriage, and then you done ran off and married this person. So, bring them on to make their story interesting. Because right now, it's just boring. We know how parole works. We know how all that shit works. And right now, Justine, you're on probation with Michael. Michael got 20 years probation. Motherfucker, so do you. Michael got to be in at 9 o'clock. Motherfucker, so do you. Michael got 60 days, can't travel. Motherfucker, so do you. Y'all on parole and probation together, okay? And you shouldn't mind it, Justine. That way you know where his ass is at. His ass got to be in the house at 9 o'clock. So you guys going to get on each other's nerves if there's not a breakaway somewhere. But you ain't going to Vegas any goddamn time soon. This really, like, changes things for me. Like anyway, moving on to these fools, Gabby and Chris. I'm going to go to probation, man. Come here, give me a hug. Chris, I really need you. You got enough damn problems than had that damn hairstyle on the top of your head. I don't know why it would be better if it was neat and fresh and shit, but it's not. I just don't understand it. We can actually upgrade him to a Wesley Snipes look if he just cleaned himself up just a little bit. Just so a he's trying bit. to be cute. They done made up and shit. He done got her some little orange juice and a damn Twinkie. They have sex. I don't give a shit. She's making eggs. They talking. Don't care any about that. Don't really care. So she said she got to go see her mom, which she lying because I guess she didn't want to tell him she had to go see the lawyer. He said he's going to see his probation officer. So then he get his ass downstairs and I said, look at these damn jeans. I said, are these Gabby's? Chris, why the fuck you got on Gabby's jeans? Where'd you get them damn jeans from, son? You must have got that out of her damn laundry. Those ain't man jeans. I don't know where you got those the little dazzles on the side of the strip. That shit, I said, where'd you get them? Gabby, you wrong for not buying that boy some damn clothes and shit. What's up? So he's talking to the Brutusers and then he looks and he's like, yeah, I had a great night, sex and all this shit. And he look, he's like, hold up. Yeah. Hold up one minute. He had a Scooby-Doo moment. Is this my shit? Is this her shit? This my shit. I bought this shit. This my damn car. Got me taking the damn train again. Got me walking and the damn car is right here. Is she lying to me? What's going on with this crooked heifer? So he call her, Gabby, Gabby, is this you? Is this us? Is this mine? Why is it here? What's the damn problem? So then she was like, I can't remember what she said, but she brought her little old duck lips ass downstairs. And of course, she likes to talk fast and do a little bunch of shit. So finally, she admits to his ass that she has a suspended license because she was out there doing dumb shit. And that's what the secret was. I told you guys, is that uh, Chris' mom had already talked about it four months ago that she had got into it with the police and shit. So this is what she's telling Chris, is that she got into it, police, got caught up, and she might go do five, um, she might have to go do some time. Okay, let's move on from that. Okay, let's take her down to the lawyer because I'm a little hot at Gabby's So she goes see this lawyer. And the story goes, they're at a bar. Her cousin is drunk. She didn't say she was drunk until afterwards. Her cousin is drunk. Get into it with the security guard. She start fighting with the security guard. She gets into it with the police. They got terrorist threats and shit because she was probably saying, I'm going to kill you. You know, you could say little shit if you threaten someone that's a terrorist threat. So she gets in her car. She's driving. I don't know if these are two separate in, in, um, things. But what caught me is she said she was driving in a 45 mile zone going 90 miles per hour. That's all I wanted to get to. I don't give a fuck about this story. 90 to 45? <laughs> 
in a residential area. I hope they throw the book at all your over the internet. I do. Bashing his man, bashing his family. You're talking so much that I know their lies at this point. You really are. Because none of them people are talking shit about you, Gabby. They're all coming to um, defend what you're saying about them. I'm going to tell you what's trash. Because I don't care. You guys heard all the stories and shit. But this is the one that stuck out to me. And that's important. And she hasn't came on to deny it. The brothers and the cousin, the mother and Chris all said she is now trying to talk to his brother from another mother that's already locked up. So apparently she's trying to get out on the show. So here you are calling Chris mom trash, calling them dirty. Ain't nothing lower than that. You dirtier than dirt, okay? I would only call Chris family trash if I want to know what relationship he have with the brothers. That's what the interviewer didn't ask. It's like, well, what relationship did Chris have with the other, the half-brother? But you know what, Gabby? You lower than all the lows. You really are. Because I'm about sick of the damn Gabby. I'm about sick of the damn Gabby. I was watching Auntie's um, review about her uh, face changing. And they showed her with this brown face. Looked like she... She took a bunch of shit and smeared it on her damn face, which would be fitting with her damn shitty ass and shitty ass attitude. Anyway, that's it. That's all. And that's all. That's enough. Um, I'll see you guys with the next Love After Lockup review. Don't be an asshole, people. Bye. This is all a lesson.